Hello, everybody. It's Phil Jacobus. It's September 30th. I'm here at my office in New York City. Thank you very much for joining me. Today, I have a very, very interesting interview with uh, Dr. Art Papier. He has one of the most unique ideas that I've heard of in a while. I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. He's with Visual DX. But before we uh, share, join Dr. Papier, uh, let's take a look at a couple of things that are in the news today. Uh, interesting, we see uh, that there's a story about producing Molly 99 up in Canada. If you're in molecular imaging, you should read this story. Uh, another, there's an algorithm that helps to distinguish COVID-19 uh, pneumonia in, in the, using chest X-ray uh, abnormalities. That's a story that's current. And here, uh, for those of you who are radiologists, there's a story uh, about a Florida radiology practice that had to pay $500,000 to settle false, false claim allegations. It's a litigious world that we live in. Uh, so those are three stories that are in our news today. I encourage you to uh, sign up for our news if you haven't already. Uh, it's interesting. It's free. You'll be the smartest person in the world. Cooler. And I'll get fired if I don't put a plug in. So please do it. Hello, uh, everyone. And as promised, today I'm joined by Dr. Art Papier, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Visual DX. Uh, he's also a uh, practicing dermatologist, and uh, he's a professor at the University of Rochester in Rochester, New York. So, Dr. Rapier, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks so much for having me today. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very interesting uh, interview. Dr. Rapier told me um, in my, when I visited with him that bias uh, has been something that he's always interested in, including racial bias. Uh, but this is a, uh, and that's currently uh, an important topic in the United States, but this is looking at that from a completely different angle. Uh, to start, however, Dr. Papier, if you'd be so kind to give us an overview of, of your company, Visual DX, and what it does. Sure, Phil. So I am a dermatologist, but my career has been dedicated to thinking about decisions that happen in the exam room. So uh, in our work, we, we developed a technology that we call Visual DX. And the idea is that people develop symptoms and have problems that they want to have analyzed. And in the past, we ex expected the doctor or any clinician to memorize it all and be able to make expert decisions every 20 minutes with each different patient and be flawless. And that maybe worked 50 or 100 years ago when there was limited knowledge, but as medical information has exploded, there's really a need to augment decisions in the exam room. So our company has developed this technology where you can search by the patient's symptoms, their signs, things like their travel history or their medications, and develop diagnostic possibilities and get guidance for testing and treatment. So this is a web-based application served from the cloud that integrates into the electronic health record is also used on the smartphone. And we, we started with dermatology for the non-dermatologists. And this was a really important area to begin in because so many patients come to their primary care physician or the emergency physician with a skin complaint and they don't have that range of experience over their career to be able to diagnose every rash. So we started there and we received a lot of attention over the years and grown to this application being used in over 2,300 hospitals and large clinics. But the application itself is not just dermatology. You can evaluate any symptom and you can get help for not only rare disorders, but we're very much focused on the variation of common diseases where a lot of error occurs. So people mistakenly think it's just about missing rare diseases. Variation of common diseases causes a lot of harm in medicine. So we're very much focused on that as well. 
Now, we talked a little bit about uh, how, uh, and thank you for that overview, and we talked a little bit about how systemic racism is present in uh, medicine and healthcare. Uh, you mentioned to me that, for instance, you used the example of uh, Lyme disease. And would you share that with us? Sure. So as dermatologists, as doctors, we examine the patient. And an important part of a physical exam of a patient is the skin exam. And from the skin exam, instantly you can see patterns without even asking any questions of the patient. You instantly can recognize clues. And what we realized years ago, we wrote a paper about this in 2006, that the training resources for training doctors in the skin exam of people of color were really limited. That there was this bias in the medical literature towards light skin. And this is really important because if a patient comes in and has a rash that's a sign, say, of an infectious disease or a clue to an internal disease, you really want your doctor to be able to see that skin finding and get drive towards a diagnosis quickly. So Lyme disease being an example has, you know, typically it would have a bullseye shaped pink ring that you could easily see on light skin. But on dark skin, it can be very, very subtle. And there are many, many examples of this in infectious disease, in immunologic disease, where the first clue could be on the skin. So as an example, there are some serious conditions that cause inflammation in blood vessels, and the blood vessels become leaky, and blood leaks out of the vessels into the skin. On white skin, you'd see these red to purple spots. On dark skin, they could appear just dark brown. And so you, you wouldn't want your doctor to miss that if you were a person of color. So we've been focused on this for the lifespan of our company to make sure that the imagery that we collect is equitable and is reliable. And that becomes important for artificial intelligence as well. Because when you train your machine learning algorithms in the field of art artificial intelligence, you have to put good data in to get good data out. So we've also been focused on AI in um, skin of color. Now, what sort of best practices can a healthcare provider uh, utilize to overcome this problem? Well, I think it starts in medical school. The medical schools need to be uh, training, purposely training in skin of color and making sure that in all the teaching materials, whether it is a PowerPoint lecture or online education, they need to have examples of how diseases look in people of color. And then in practice, your resources should include skin of color. And that obviously is our focus of our company is to provide the resources so that we can do expert pattern recognition in a minute or under in the exam room. And that pattern recognition tool should be in all skin types and not a separate atlas of dark skin because um, as it pointed out to me recently by an African-American dermatologist, she said to me, well, I see people with light skin. I see people with dark skin. I want a tool that handles all skin types. So I think professionals need comprehensive, reliable, highly reliable knowledge systems as they work. And that's the focus of what we do at Visual DX. Now, I know that a lot of people nowadays individuals rely on Dr. Google to uh, prepare themselves or try to diagnose their own condition. And sometimes they show up at the hospital or the clinic and with a preconception about their condition. Uh, how does your platform help uh, to educate them or put them more at ease? That's a great question. So um, I'm a believer in high quality information for patients. And patients are going to be Googling. They are going to be going to online tools no matter what. So very early on, we created a site uh, for patients called SkinSight that's spelled as a play on the word insight. So S-K-I-N-S-I-G-H-T dot com. And we put that site up probably 15 years ago. 
And there's a half a million visitors that come there every month to try to uh, get more information that's professional information about skin disorders. And recently we went on to create an app for patients that explain skin conditions. It's not a self diagnosis tool, but what it does is it allows you to take a picture, answer questions and get to see possibilities that you then review and read. There's no probabilistic statement saying you have this diagnosis and it's not encouraging people to self-diagnose, but it's teaching them the process. So a better informed patient makes for a better informed doctor patient relationship. And so we're all about that with this new app called ASA, A-Y-S-A, that anybody can download for free, either from the iOS store or from Google Play. I see. Now, um, I had to write that down so I don't forget, uh, because that's an interesting app to have on my phone. Um, however, let's fast forward. The patient has looked at ASA and a AISA and downloaded the app, and now they're visiting the doctor uh, or the clinician, and the doctor or the clinician has their phone or their iPad, and they're using uh, your Visual DX software. Uh, there, the doctor is probably in a better position to diagnose what's happening on the patient's body than the patient. Uh, does the doctor share any sort of information at, at the point of care? Absolutely. So first of all, our work with ASA is not to turn every person into a dermatologist. So we cover 200 of the most common skin disorders. Our work with Visual DX is a professional tool spanning medicine. It has 3,200 diagnoses in it. So we're arming the professional with a professional level tool. They can use that tool in the exam room to educate the patient. So, you know, a saying in medicine is common things happen commonly. And so often the primary care physician knows immediately the patient has a common skin condition, say like eczema or psoriasis, but the patient is demanding a referral to an expert. And the primary care physician is totally capable of caring for that patient. And really it's more efficient for the primary care physician to reassure the patient and treat the patient rather than the patient having two visits instead of one. So our users, in this scenario, we'll open up Visual DX and find an image that looks exactly like the patient and pivot the monitor over to the patient to settle down the anxious patient. And during these times of COVID, what do we have? I mean, we have anxious patients. We're all anxious, you know, the unknown, the uncertainty around COVID. And so patients come in with questions, is this a sign of COVID and you know COVID causes a skin rash primarily involving the toes and we have images of that in Visual DX. But most of the time a rash today, particularly in areas where COVID is very low, that rash is not due to COVID. So imagine your doctor now has a patient that thinks they have COVID and with this rash but the doctor knows they don't have COVID and they have a form of eczema what the doctor does in under five seconds big, brings up a picture and the picture could be in light skin or the picture could be in dark skin depending on the the skin type of the patient and show them a picture that looks exactly like them and print a handout for them or email the handout to them and so we get countless stories from our users of how empowering this is for them and how it can shortcut a lengthy conversation where they're reducing that anxiety. How often is your database updated? We, we guarantee at least um, four times a year, but with COVID, we've been updating pretty much monthly the, the COVID content. And, and there's other areas where it changes very, very quickly, like our drug reactions, medication adverse events. Uh, we're just all the time updating the database of new reports in the literature of disease adverse events. And then there's also areas like infectious disease, when it, uh, infectious disease moves to a new country, 
because in Visual DX, you can search by any country in the world to see the infectious diseases in a travel or, or an immigrant. So that kind of data needs to be updated constantly. Well, uh, Visual DX sounds like a really good idea and the world is filled with good ideas and I get to learn about a lot of them and I'm so glad I was able to visit with you because you uh, are really on the, the cutting edge. So congratulations on your idea and thanks very much for spending time with us today. Bill, thanks so much for covering us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.